even more extraordinary was the left-wing media's first instinct after the assassination attempt. They wanted to hide it. Have a look at CNN. They called it Trump Falls. The Washington Post described it as loud noises. And on the NBC, it was popping noises. But this one truly takes the cake. CNN described it as an interruption before host Jamie Gangel attacked Trump for saying, fight, fight, fight. I think what we're hearing from people is that's not the message that we want to be sending right now. We want to tamp it down. Mm. And have a look at this warped analysis. Donald Trump and the people around him perceive themselves to be under threat. And that's all that matters. That is, that is not legitimate. That is wrong. Um, you hear the screams from the audience. People um, are terrified. And how's this cracker from Wolf Blitzer suggesting Trump wasn't actually injured? Now, if someone is shot with a bullet that pierces the upper part of your right ear, wouldn't that bullet also continue onto someone's skull? and create much more a much more dangerous situation. And ABC News' Martha Radatz having a complete mental breakdown, appearing to blame the assassination attempt on Donald Trump and his supporters. And supporters are certainly, in some parts, angry. And, and let's remember January 6th. Uh, in so many ways for the campaign, uh, January 6th will probably be in the background after yesterday's event. This is a very difficult time for this campaign, I'm sure this week in Milwaukee that President Trump will highlight this. Sebastian, this is what CNN would call a mostly peaceful assassination attempt. I love my Antipodean brethren, so I feel justified in using some salty language now. Everything you've just played is empirical evidence that none of those people are journalists. They will do and say whatever has to be said. The idea that a bullet traveling 3,000 feet per second actually hits President Trump's ear, and that cretinous little dwarf says, well, um, shouldn't it have gone into his skull? Was he really shot as another man behind President Trump, a 50-year-old fire chief who lay on his daughter and his wife to protect them, literally has his cranium blown open as another bullet hits him. And this is why we have to win on November the 5th, because President Trump was right. What was it, seven years ago, when he said the media are the enemy of the people? They have absolutely no right to be called journalists. Completely agree with you. Uh, such a good analysis. And also now, a day later, Donald Trump, he's back at it and in fine form. Here we go. <laughs> Just finished talking to the former president. Um, you, you would think that he would be down. Uh, I mean, he is, he's in the saddle. He's excited. And I said, is there anything that I could, you know, share with the audience? And he, he paused for a second and he said, um, can you just tell him I love him? Sebastian, is this quintessential Donald Trump, undeterred, getting on with the job? What message is he trying to send? i got to tell you, I, I don't get it. I don't comprehend it. I, I've got an excuse for my pugilistic attitude because of, you know, the, the family baggage I bring with my parents escaping communism. That, that, that guy grew up in Queens. He's a billionaire you know, m mogul who had a TV, you know, reality show for 14 years at the top of the charts. I, I don't know how he does it. He's 25 years older than me. I, uh, I couldn't keep up with him in the White House. The fact that, yes, I, I, can't, I can't believe I'm saying this. Yesterday, he's almost assassinated. He flew home that night, discharged himself from the hospital, then plays golf today, and then says, oh, yeah, the Republican convention. Should we delay that? No, 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 let's get on Trump Force One. And then he flew to Milwaukee. It's mind boggling. I, I don't know what he's made of. It's titanium mixed in with Kevlar, with tungsten steel, and then a little bit of pixie dust because it's just magical. Oh, he's 
incredible. I don't know how he does it either, but good to see him going, no, I'm undeterred, getting on with it, let's keep fighting. And I just have to ask you, Sebastian, how hard would this incident be on the family? We, we saw a statement from Melania Trump. She said, when I watched that violent bullet strike my husband, Donald, I realised my life and Barron's life were on the brink of devastating change. I am grateful to the brave secret service agents and law enforcement officials who risked their own lives to protect my husband. How terrifying would this be for Melania too? Yeah, Melania is also absolutely unique and, and they broke the mould when they made her. When, when, when I was in the White House, she was one of the most gracious human beings I've ever met. If your viewers haven't done so, you can find on my Twitter feed, just go to Seb Gorka, S-E-B, G-O-R-K-A, read her two-page letter to the American people that she released earlier today. And it's it's one of the most beautiful pieces of writing I've ever seen uh, about what this means, the, the fabric of the republic being rent asunder and how love is the way. And with love and dedication, love of country, love of family, love of God, we can fix everything. So I, I cannot imagine what she was feeling when she saw that footage, when the Secret Service really failed to secure that perimeter at the event, and then seeing her husband covered in blood and then raising that fist. I mean, that's who Donald Trump is. So I, I'd, I'd request all of the, the Sky News viewers is just keep, keep her, keep the president, keep uh, Eric, uh, Lara, Don Jr., the whole family in your prayers and pray for the future of America because we need normality back we need a president who makes sure there aren't wars around the world like when we were in the White House. And, and we need to stop the crazies. I mean, look, I'm no fan of Bill Clinton, especially for what he did with that 21-year-old intern. But at least he was a Democrat who would reign in the crazies. Right now, you can't name one Democrat in a leadership position who reigns in the crazies. On the contrary, they're, they're putting the petrol on, on, on the bonfire. As a result, it's up to us, it's up to the patriots, it's up to President Trump and, you know, everybody who loves America to make sure he has a landslide victory and then we can start to rebuild America and just shun, shun the crazies. Yeah, you're not wrong. It's a very good point. And I just want to ask you about Ivanka Trump because she stayed by her father's side as he spent the night in his estate recovering. Tell us about their relationship. How close is Donald Trump to his daughter Ivanka? As, as close as two loving people can be who are father and daughter. I mean, she was a colleague of mine in the White House. Her husband was an incredibly impressive guy who was head of uh, innovation. And beyond that, he brought us the historic Abraham Accords that he negotiated uh, with two other people that brought peace between Israel and five other nations, which was rent asunder when Biden arrived, reversed everything. And then we saw the greatest loss of Jewish life since since the show, since the Holocaust on October the 7th. So um, I, I'm not surprised that she was there at his bedside. I don't think he needed anybody by his bedside because he was hitting those holes in one uh, earlier today. But, but, the, but the fact is, you know, that's what a loving... Look, you can judge a man by his children, right? And, and you look at this family and you say... Wow, wow, I have even more respect for President Trump because I look at these amazing children. I know them all. I mean, you know, I know Don Jr., I know Eric, I know Lara, his wife, who's a colleague of my wife in the Republican Party. Um, and Ivan, Ivan was a, a, you know, a colleague of mine, just amazing people who are following, trying to follow in their father's uh, gargantuan footsteps. Well, they, they just look like such a, a terrific family. Sebastian Gorka, really appreciate your insights. Thank you so much for joining us on the program this evening. God bless. Keep us in your prayers, please, my friends.